Okay, are we live? <laughs> it looks like we are. Mine says waiting for Carol. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, wow, we're live. We're on. We're on the air. Hey, hey, YouTube universe. Oh, wow, we're live. We're on. We're on the air. Hey. Okay, there's a delay. I didn't realize that was going to happen. Okay, you gotta you gotta turn that yeah, off. I think I you gotta turn yours off because it's going to be interfering with this since we're in such close well, proximity. I turned the sound off. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. All right. So we're gonna start. <laughs> Let's not putz around like all those other novice YouTubers do and waste everybody's time. Okay. Nice. One. Hello, hello, operator. Is this information? Information, please. 411, looking for information. Swordfish. Okay, obviously that's not the password. Let's try a different way. <laughs> Smartphones. <laughs> 411 search. This call may be monitored or recorded. City and state, please. I didn't even know this was still working. Oh, sorry. Voice recognition. Um, Abingdon, Virginia. I'm sorry. I didn't get that. For what city and state? Abingdon, Virginia. That's only Virginia, right? No, it's not. <laughs> Abingdon, Virginia. One moment for an operator. What a nice idea. Right, that great idea. But listening, Can, please. Are, are you a real person or are you AI? I'm a person. Oh, Abingdon, Virginia. Oh, Abingdon, Virginia. Abingdon, Virginia. Okay, the, the voice uh, recognition uh, software wasn't... Uh, recognizing the okay. okay. Barter Theater is what we're looking for. Thank you. It's a famous Press bar. one to have a text message of this listing sent to your phone. Okay, can't we just get the number? Thank you. A text message has been sent and your call is now being connected. <gasps> oh, Press wow. One to receive a text okay, this is really scary. All right, so this is how we solve problems today. Um, actually, I thought the 411 directory assistance uh, service uh, was extinct. I mean, I read an article not long ago that it went out of service as of January 1st, 2023. So this is news to me. Apparently you can still speak to a live person if you want to, yeah, but you have to go through several steps to get there. Every once in a while you hear these reports about they did discover an animal that they thought was extinct. extinct. Yes. <laughs> so apparently 411 is still alive and well, uh, although in a slightly different uh, form. Anyway, this is the Unlisted Receptionist. It's our very first YouTube episode, uh, Journey into the Unknown for us. <laughs> so please try to be patient. Um, anyway, we are a problem-solving channel. Uh, the whole channel is dedicated to solving what we call the trivial and trying problems of everyday life. We're not going to uh, we're not going to solve the big complex stuff like uh, world hunger and you securing know, the border. Securing. Oh, sorry, don't mean to be political, but you know the big problems we leave to the experts. But we are here to help solve those little annoying problems, like um, how do I connect to a FedEx? live person so that I can get my package delivered on time um, or after four days after four days or how can we uh, actually get a an appointment with a doctor any doctor in less than six months and how can we do that by speaking to an actual live person so a lot of this is sort of tied into how automation and uh, how can we cancel an existing <laughs> appointment appointment uh, right. in less than 10 in minutes. In less than 10 minutes, right. Um, so anyway, that, that, that's 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 a little side issue here. But today, we, we know that a lot of these trying and trivial everyday problems that we have to solve um, are um, 
they have kind of a negative vibe to them. So we didn't want to make that part of our very first uh, experience or your very first experience with YouTube, uh, the Unlisted Receptionist channel. So we decided to do something a little more joyful and relaxing, but still in the realm of trying to figure something out, trying to solve a problem. And this is what we came up with, uh, and which is, <laughs> We're gonna tell we're gonna tell them in a moment, right? What 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 is the secret to this whole I guess setup so. here? I guess so, right. Oh, by the way, this is Joe and I'm Carol Ann. And this whole thing is the unlisted receptionist. Um, so we decided anyway that we're going to celebrate National Puzzle Month because January, the whole month, is National Puzzle Month or National Puzzle Games Month. And um Tomorrow actually is National Puzzle Day. So, and we like puzzles. And there's actually a puzzle and game store right here in Abingdon uh, called Wolf's Den Games. And I talked to a very smart uh, person yesterday at that store. And my head is full of <laughs> puzzles uh, that are embedded in the various games that uh, these folks sell. Uh, but today we're going to keep it on the lighter side. Um, obviously, there are lots of different types of puzzles. Some are more complex than others. All are really good for um, using your brain. Exercise. Left, left and exercising your brain. There you go. Left and right brain, believe it or not, if you believe in the two sides of the brain, uh, which there are various debates on that as well. But anyway. Um, most people are, the puzzles that most people are familiar with are, I mean, jigsaw puzzles uh, that deal with shapes and putting things together in the right place so that you could create specialized, unique puzzles like Rubik's Cube. And that, by the way, is the most popular puzzle of all time, apparently, for all ages. Um, puzzles that deal with... Um, obviously words or word searches, crossword puzzles, that's a big one. Um, one of the things that we wanted to share with you today, and we actually haven't quite gotten, we haven't quite figured out how to do that, but we will, uh, is the very uh, award-winning documentary film called Wordplay featuring the puzzle master himself, Will Shorts. I mean, it's a pretty good documentary and it sort of explores the whole culture of puzzles and why people love them and, you know, how they focusing fit. Focusing on uh, crossword, crossword puzzles. Right, crossword puzzles. I mean, that's pretty, um, I'm, I'm not really, did you solve crossword word puzzles? In, no, I was in, more of a jigsaw puzzle. Jigsaw guy puzzle. When I was, yeah. yeah okay. You were a jigsaw puzzle guru though, as mm -hmm. I, yeah. I am very bad with puzzles. In fact, the way I usually figure things out is I, try to pick somebody else's brains <laughs> to help have them figure it out. And I might be doing that in some of our episodes of the uh, unlisted receptionist, but don't tell anybody that I'm, uh, I'll do my best to figure out this puzzle. This is not really a puzzle, I guess, that we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be playing a game of upwards. Upwards is a strategy game, um, like many puzzles. And it's very similar uh, in, if anybody doesn't know this, and you might know this already, similar to Scrabble, except it's way cooler and, yeah, and it comes it's with, just more with, fun. Um, an outline of rules, and we play this, we've been playing this almost every day for at least 10 years. At least 10, really? That long? Yes. Oh, and wow. We don't play for points, we're not competitive, better. we just, fill up the board until it's done to spell the words. Well, and also we're really interested in kind of, well, this game curiously has evolved and that's kind of the, that's that's really the fun part of a puzzle, of solving a puzzle or a puzzle game um, is you never, you learn something and you see, a new, you, what am I trying to say? You learn something every time you play the game, it doesn't become boring. Um, and the game sort of takes on a life of its own. And I think it's a hundred <laughs> tiles with letters on them. Right, just like Scrabble, right? So you pick them as you go. And 
the, there's almost an infinite combination of letters. Infinite possibilities yeah. of filling the board and just creating interesting architectures on the board. Um, and we just find that the game over time has evolved for us. So it gets harder and harder, actually. You know, it's, it, it, there's a new challenge each time we, each time we play the game. Uh, so it really is a it's really good like exercise it's, it's for figuring something out. It's difficult every time. It's just, it's more challenging and we learn more stuff as we do it. But it's, so what's the difference? Difficult versus challenging? Well, if it was more difficult each time, after 10 years, we would have given up on it. Uh, good point. <laughs> yes, we would have given up on it, but we haven't. Uh, because the thrill of, of of solving the challenge, that is using all of our tiles to create real words, and that's the other thing. There are a few there are a few rules uh, to this game, as there are with many puzzle games. And we've made up a few of our own. Rules <laughs> we, as oh, we you're not supposed to tell people that. <laughs> oh, I mean, you can, but you want to try to stay within the realm of what the puzzle creators have defined as the rules uh, because, you know, if it's too easy, it's not really a puzzle. The challenge is gone, right? right. Um, so anyway, we're celebrating National Puzzle Month by playing one of our favorite games of Upwords. And of course, we're building words on top of words. That's how it works uh, from the draw pile. Right. Um, so we're celebrating by completing this game. And this is the challenge for us today, uh, and we'll see if we can do it. <laughs> uh, we're gonna play this game in half an hour. I mean, usually we're like doing other things, you know, doing the laundry, um, uh, whatever, we're doing other things. Uh, okay, so and and it takes to, longer. To actually play it. We actually to have to play, it. we have to play to complete it. Oh, and then we have a surprise afterwards, which I'm not gonna tell you what it is. We'll post it on our YouTube channel. Remember that's at the unlisted receptionist on YouTube. Um, so you can see it there. 12 minutes into this. Well, that's okay. okay. I'm just giving, you know, just, I mean, have you seen, there have been a lot of people on YouTube when they first start, they just go on and on forever, right? Okay, but we don't wanna be those people. So anyway, we are going to start the game and we'll kind of share uh, any, um, useful strategies that we might have as okay. we go along. Do we want to try to get the camera looking at the board? Um, we can try to do that. Well, right now we just have a blank board, right? So we start yeah, out with but, a blank board. But it's not visible on the board. Yeah. Right. Like but that. I mean, if you move your, tilt your monitor down. Oh, yeah. there we are. You don't have to see our faces right. anymore. Very good. Okay. This is why you need a partner right. <laughs> to help advise you on best okay. practices. Okay, so okay. first thing, each person pulls one tile. One tile only. And the one closest to the beginning of the alphabet is the brick, the winner of the draw. So I got an S, Carol got an R, she goes first. Oh, no. Okay. Sometimes you get the same and then we have to draw again, obviously. Okay. And then we pull a to you know, six more tiles. So we six more tiles. maintain a total of seven letters on our tray and we at try one to, time. And we try to mix up the tiles in the draw pile um, because sometimes you get into a situation where you get, you know, three, three of the same letter and four of the same letter, and that makes it rather difficult to. Uh, yeah, and we've noticed again. some weird patterns where it seems like if one person pulls a U, the U's kind of hang out together at everybody, and that one person gets like, all of the U's. Kind of like socks. On that game. In yeah. the dryer. Right. Um, okay, so Carol's going first. Oh, no, <laughs> okay. All right, and we each have seven tiles, obviously. Okay, so I am going to... <laughs> and let's try to... Spell them facing that way so it looks good on the screen. Okay. And and the other thing we forgot to mention, and again, you guys may already know this, is you have to cover one of these red squares. Uh, you don't have to cover all of them. You just have to cover one of them with the starting word. So that's what I'm going to have to do here. And, of course, I have a terrible hand. Um, 
I, I always say that, but it's true. I do have a terrible hand. Um, but I have one of those tricky letters and I'm gonna try to get rid of that one first. And you probably can guess what annoying letter that is. So, so let's do it this way to, so it will be readable on the screen. Okay, here we go. Right? Yeah, all right, okay. so I started out with dry. Yep. I'll continue. Mm -hmm. And if you have a difficult letter, um, you know, depending on where you are in the game, you might want to just go ahead and get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, if you can. that's a good strategy when you get the difficult letters to get rid of them as quickly as possible. J, Q, Y, Z, you know, the, those are the X. X. Now, I, I will say though, Joe, yeah. depending on, like if you're almost at the end of the game or in the third quarter of the game, Almost any letter can be difficult, depending yeah. on how the board has configured okay. itself up to that point. Oh, very nice. All right. And so we have to keep it moving. Keep it moving because we got to do this in half an hour. Um, okay. So next, what am I going to do next? Hmm. Shoot. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention. One of the challenges, and I don't know that we're going to do it this time, we try to make sure we hit all four corners of the board uh, ultimately. And that has proven to be a rather interesting challenge. We've gotten it a, a, a couple of times, but it doesn't always happen. All right, you always wanna keep replenishing your tiles um, so that you always have seven at all times. And make sure none of the tiles get away from you. Like one time we were playing and we noticed that we finished the whole game and there were two tiles just hanging out, two orphan tiles that we didn't use, which is probably why the game was so difficult. Okay. Hmm. Get over here. Now notice we're trying to build from the center. Um, I don't know why that works better than you know why that works better than others? I don't know. Okay, but I mean, that's kind of a good idea, or at least the experts have uh, indicated that that is a good idea to sort of build from the center. Again, one of the weird letters. Mm -hmm. um, the, the difficult letters, like we said, J, X, Z, and this one, the Q, there's only one of each of those tiles. Thank God. Okay, so you, you know, use it wherever you can, you know, and sometimes the opportunities for using a particular letter are more creative than others, <laughs> but, you know, any word, as long as it's a word, that's good enough. Okay, um, hmm. I'm going to do this, getting over here in the corner, not the absolute corner, but a corner. So what we'd really love to know from anybody out there who's listening, you're all enlisted, I hear, um, is what is your favorite game or puzzle game? And why do you love it? So that's all, that's the whole part, point of us celebrating today is to find out from you, our community of puzzlers, What's your favorite puzzle or your favorite puzzle game? And why do you love it? So feel free to share that information with us, if you will. Um, you can also email us at the Unlisted Receptionist 2024 at gmail.com, if you so prefer. Okay, oh, I'm getting into a bind here, Joe. Okay. Already, I'm having trouble. Well, I have an E, so I'm going to make use of that letter, which can be very useful, uh, but as long as it's not late in the game. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, we're popping right along here. Yep. So the next thing I'm going to do, ugh.
Okay, I've, I've got one of the difficult letters, and so I'm going to try to get rid of it now as opposed to later. One of the tendencies that we had early on is we wanted to be, you know, kind of impressive by spelling really cool and different words. And we find that that's not always the best strategy right. because sometimes it can, it can uh, present an obstacle later on in the game where you can't really build on top of the word, the really cool word that you chose. Uh, and, and it kind of blocks the opportunity to create uh, words to fill up the rest of the board, if that makes sense. Yeah, and the idea here is, you know, it's called upwards because you build the tiles up at, as you create this crossword style configuration you create more words by connecting them and putting tiles on top of other tiles to make the new words. Now, have we used all the difficult letters yet? We've used no. K, Y, Z. Uh, U can be a difficult letter too. We haven't so used- So uh, We haven't used X or Q. Oh man, the deadly Q. Um, Again, hopefully these don't come at the end of the game because they can really be trouble. But we've managed to survive in spite of those situations. Okay, I got one of the worst ones <laughs> just now. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not a deal breaker, but. And oh. sometimes you get stuck and you have to use sort of unusual words like V-I-E. Which is fine. Um, okay, so I'm not stuck after all. Come on, get in there. Got rid of the J, that's cool. Oh, always a relief when you get past these hurdles. But again, you know, this is not really competitive. We're actually collaborating. Yeah. And sometimes at the end of the game, if we really get stuck, we kind of share tiles, which is really not part of the rules structure. But, you know, you want to keep it light and fun and entertaining and collaborative. Um, unless you're in an upwards competition, then it's doggy dog. But Okay, your turn. That's not what this is about. Okay, my turn, and I'm gonna do. Uh, hmm. You always try to assess the board as you go along. You don't want to get too bogged down into analyzing it too deeply, but you kind of want to be aware of where it's going. Yep. Rather just randomly making words. Yes, I did. I okay. did fib. Thank you. You see, I'm I'm on the board. I'm not one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I need a tile though. On the board. On the board. Wake myself up. Oh, and we also enjoy having a cup of tea <laughs> during our upwards games. And so, usually it's kind of small words, like three or four letter words, but some you know, times when you have the right letters, you can go a little bit longer. Like I just put crisp. Oh, very nice. And then that gives you other opportunities to build other things on. I think that's the first time we've used that particular word. So, and it's really cool. It's exciting when you, when you're able to use a new word that you've never used before in the game. So we did that today. Okay, this is one of my favorites, band. And I'm going to do, oh, uh, well, D, okay, I'm not finished yet. Maybe I am finished. Um, okay, what the heck? <clears throat> One of the things that you might want to stay away from is making words that are too long. I think that's one of the yes. one of the problems we created for ourselves is we 
tried to do cool words and words that were more than five letters, yeah. which is not necessarily an asset. Sometimes if you just, if you have the letters and you can do something impressive that may be six or seven letters, it just kind of ties things up and you can't really build anything on it. But it just, it's a learning process. Okay. Hmm. Well, So I, we haven't played Scrabble in a long time, but as I recall, you know, Scrabble has its own challenges. Um, and maybe Upwards is a little more flexible, but it's also, there are also more challenges in that you, to really make it work, you have to constantly be thinking of ways you can uh, expand on words by building words on top of words. Yeah, and the limit is five tiles. You can only build up to five tiles. Very important point we forgot to mention. Thank you, Joe. Okay, I still have seven. I have seven tiles, and all of these letters are... <laughs> <laughs> all of these letters suck. Um, oh, shoot. So, hmm. Don't know where I'm going with this. Maybe... Okay, um, again, the board is already pretty full and I've gotten one of the most dreaded letters <laughs> in the repertoire. So I'm going to get rid of it here. Not a very interesting word or choice, uh, but hey, you don't wanna be stuck with the letter at the end of the game and have nowhere to put it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, this is one of the situations that we sometimes find ourselves in where we are stuck. I mean, I'm not really stuck. It's just that the only opportunity I see is going to create a problem later on if I go there. But sometimes I have, you have no choice. So, hmm. Okay, I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to do this. That works. Because K is also a problematic letter. <clears throat> and eventually the board is going to be uh, such that, well, you'll see. <laughs> yeah, some of the letters are more common, but they're also difficult, like the K and the F. To, to, to find a place for them this far into the game. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> okay. 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 Um. Well. Okay. I'm just going to do this because why not? Okay. 
How long have we been playing? I, don't <laughs> been, know. I think we've been playing about, oh, we've got still time. You also want to try to build the words, even if it's more than four letters. You know, ideally four, three, even three letter words are great. Five letter words can also be useful, but you want to try to build a word in such a way that you leave spaces so that other words can fit in the little nooks and crannies yep. <laughs> wherever they are. You know, once you've sort of... Um, and I don't know if we explained it early on, but we could place all of the tiles in the box facing it down. So when we're pulling these tiles, we don't see what we're pulling. Obviously, right? <laughs> that would make it really easy. We could just yeah. pick and choose. Oh, I'll take that and that. Um, oh, I need three vowels. <laughs> let me just choose them now. Oh, my goodness. And sometimes, oh, that's not right. That's not what I wanted to do. Sometimes, you know, just doing a two-letter word can be useful. Like, yeah. I just did that. Why? Because our current challenge that we've set for ourselves is to try to use all corners of the board. Um, I don't think that's going to happen, but we may get most of them. We may, may not get to the actual corners, but we're going to get close. Yeah, which is, you know... If you get close, uh, you've embraced the challenge. Oh, man. Okay, so now I'm getting like twos of several different letters, yeah. none of which are particularly exciting uh, or have many opportunities to use at this point. Um, that's okay. We shall survive. Um where was I going with this, Joe? I don't know. <laughs> I was going somewhere. Uh, too bad you can't have a like a GPS device to give you advice on you know where to go from here. Upwards, I'm sure that'll be something somebody will figure out at some point. All right, so I'm gonna do there, I'm using a corner. How about that? So upwards is definitely kind of is definitely a strategy game um, more than anything else. It's also a great vocabulary builder and expander. Um, I mean, we we find ourselves in situations we haven't today, but in uh, at other times we find ourselves learning new words because we have a word in mind uh, because it's the only way we can make the tiles that we have work, but we're not sure it's a word. So we look it up and think, and, and yeah. nine, times, nine times, times out of 10, it is a word. So we find out we can use it and there we have a, a new word in our arsenal. Um, okay. Well, hmm. build on this word a bit, changing the fed to him. And getting rid of the Y, making that hey. Six, seven. As in hey you. <laughs> hey you. Okay, so you. And. La, la, I am P. Okay, so. Okay, no more top. No no more tiles. left in the box, so wow. we're getting to the end. I've got five, and you've got six. six? Okay. 
getting down to the wire here, folks. Pray for us. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay. W-I-L-E is a word, right? While? Yeah. Okay, and I've maxed out on that particular space, so I can't add, because because we can only build up to five, right. a height of five tiles. Okay. Um, okay. C-R-U-D-E, crude. <laughs> Oh. I'm going to use law again. Okay. And and notice uh, you, there there can be no breaks obviously in the in the architecture. Um, yeah, everything needs to be connected somehow. So that's oh, important. Okay. It's kind of a obvious thing, but sometimes the obvious things don't seem that obvious. Okay, I'm going to do this, change must to most. Wow. Okay. The end of the game, sometimes you get into a pattern where you're only using one tile and you're using and you're making two letter words. That's and, fine. And I am done. And that always happens. Yeah. <laughs> Joe is usually done before I am, but I only have one left. So I just got to figure out where it needs to go, where it can go. And it shouldn't be that difficult, but sometimes letters, like we said earlier, vowels that should be useful and easy to find a place for become problematic at the end. Ah, but here is where this one can live. And we're done. Yay. And I think we made it. I think we did it in at least under the wire of 30 minutes. Yes, and before the computers ran out of power. So it is possible, folks. And thank you so much, anybody who's out there, for joining us today to celebrate National Puzzle Month. We only have three more three days left to celebrate uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So we'll be posting some other puzzle surprises for your enjoyment on I can't our. See you. Oh, sorry, uh, on our YouTube channel, <laughs> we'll be posting some puzzle surprises for you to enjoy and share with your friends. Or, or not um, in the next couple of days. And thank you so much for celebrating with us today. And Happy if puzzling. You're interested, the game is upwards. Upwards. And this edition is and there's by the Hasbro. I think it started out as a Milton Bradley game. I'm yeah. not sure. <laughs> anyway, it's really fun and it exercises sizes the brain. So happy puzzling from the unlisted the unlisted receptionist. Bye for now.